He manages to secure the last hit. Right now, S4 probably working on a Hex. I think this is the best item that he can go for. If you go for a Yules, your hero is pretty much useless with this game. You go for that item if you have a kill or two. Um, going for the Aghanims also probably doesn't do enough. So going for the Hex means that at some point the Storm is going to have to grab a BKB. Same with uh, the Drill Ranger. And you want to force them into that weird situation where instead of continuing their snowball, they have to stop and get a BKB. Right. Speaking of BKB, Artur has his coming in. That tier 1 tower rapidly dropping, though, to Illidan's push as the Draw Ranger. This is allowing them to kind of keep up with the SF. Oh, this is such a bad situation for BP to be in, though. Shadowplay goes off. Illidan actually gets some distance. Now the counter word gets dropped. The Telekinesis is there. Light Strike Array misses. FNG pops his head out. This. He's trying to get away. Silence actually gets laid out. Illidan, hopefully. Well, it's getting to the trees and TPing out, but there's no way. Team 2 can actually get to there. A big pickoff, even if it does cost them their Tier 1 tower. Virtus Pro, oh my goodness, it actually looks like they want to still fight this one with the initiation from TK Phobos. This would be a pretty crazy choice by them to try 3 versus 5. And sure enough, they do back up. I don't think they necessarily had to go for that top push either, though. They showed two of their heroes in the mid lane, one of the heroes in the bottom lane, meaning that Max... VP can't send anybody else up there. There's only one tier 2 tower, not enough uh, space for them to get there in time. And I mean, they just pretty much fed away two heroes. Like, you have to anticipate Secret having at least a Dust or a Sentry ready. They see the Shadow Blade come out on the draw. They're always going to anticipate that. There's no professional team that will see a Shadow Blade and say, okay, well, let's just find out what happens and right. hope that he doesn't invis. And I mean, that's just free two kills for them. and. They want to use this Aegis at this point, though. Yeah. With the Bloodstone, they're probably going to try to get aggressive, and RTZ is a really good target here. Absolutely. DK Phobos starting things off with an Echo Slam. They will be able to chain stun and aim silly pop RTZ. The use of the Laguna Blade has got to be all about that Shallow Grave from Puppy. They did not want to give that support the opportunity to be able to save SF for five seconds. And let there be a turnaround. Oh, Illidan from yeah. behind. He jumps in. He's going to be able to get the Silence the on the Puppy, and they do easily get the kill thanks to the Fisher. And it looks like with those two pickoffs, they should be able to get this tier 2 tower. Team Secret actually going to go for it, back him up. Sonic Wave instantly taking out one, and a second as Zai runs him down. God turns around on the S4. They will be able to pick up that counter kill. Kuro's up next. God, oh, what a ball lightning steal from Kuro. Actually gets away from the Fisher. And now they're actually going to push BP away from this tier 2 tower because of that. Well worth the trade of S4's life. I think Kuro was fine there, but by stealing the ball lightning, now they have better ways of initiating. It's just a good ability for him to steal because he's got such a low mana pool to work with, so it doesn't cost too much. I think the activation, it's it says 78, so that means he can probably go from tier 2 to tier 3 relatively safely, and this is going to make it really hard for VP to lock him down. Once again, Lil's going for the medallion into Solar Crest. A couple of other items here. FNG doesn't have a whole lot of item progression just yet. That'll probably come with the tier 2 towers falling. DK Fobo is actually going to go for a four staff instead of the Yule Scepter he went for last time. I kind of think this is cool by Crow though, because he can actually catch Illidan really easily. Cap. He walks into Illidan, uh, blows the zip, immediately lifts him, and then just makes sure that Illidan is spotted for the rest of his team. Puppy is actually in a very dangerous position right now. He was trying to get some really fine vision himself. up. The TP out, but God is there to get the pull. And the Fisher on top of that. That's just another charge for the Storm Spear. Even if he couldn't use his Aegis earlier, he still has 11 Bloodstone charges. It's probably okay, though, because you're continuing to snowball, and S4 just isn't really getting anything out of this. Oh, Kuro, Kuro he actually gets the initiation on FNG, seals this nuke, Light Strike Array, two-man Fisher. Kuro is not going to make it out because he traded the Ball Lightning or the Dragon Slave in order to get that trade off. Still probably a decent trade right now, and right now they're gonna get some birds out of this. No, no, nice pushback. The silence was actually enough to save those two familiars until S4 hunts one of them down. What's really significant for our Secret now is they have a good way of initiating the fights. We saw it in the last fight. Zai has his blink dagger now. It's gonna be so much easier for them to group up. That Roshan pit fight is gonna become so dangerous for VP to take with that blink dagger available. DK Phobos about to finish the four staff too. Items, items, items. This puppy drops the sentry ward. Illidan 
Walking in and out. This is such a dangerous game that he's playing. The Storm Spirit isn't close enough. Everybody TPing in now. Oh, Illidan already the Shallow Grave preemptively used by Puppy. Illidan's going to try and TP out seconds away. What a familiar drop there from Lil. This is why he is one of the most feared Visage players across all of Dota. He's just so calm with it. He always knows what he wants to do with his familiars. Saves it to the last second so that there's no way that they can grab him. And great play by him. He's about to finish the Orchid though, and the next Roche ride I feel is going to determine a lot. If you get the Roche on again on G, that means one of your supports is dead for sure. Maybe even uh, S4. But if you can get it on Arteezy, that means you can just kind of uh, power through all the lanes and just give him the Aegis. It's so hard to kill him the first time around, you probably have to blow the Echo and the Laguna Blade, and from there, Secret just get into a fight. Is G looking at S4, who is going to blink away unless... Oh, God, no! Just half a millimeter away from being able to break down the right tree that would have revealed the S4 TPing out. Going back to it, God chooses to go for the Orchid here. Does he really feel far enough ahead of S4 that he's not worried about that Scythe of Ice? No. He's had that ultimate orb for quite some time. Uh, he's died one additional time, so he knows that S4 is still quite far away from it. But, I mean, Secret, they're going for the push right now. I think they feel confident with the Blink Dagger on Zai and RTZ. He has so much farm. He's got a BKB, the Talisman of Evasion. It's going to be incredibly hard for them to take him down. Which kind of pushes uh, Illidan to this awkward situation where he has to make a decision between MKB and BKB. I think he has to go for the BKB. God. Oh, mind games. RTZ, his damage is too much. Gets the last click on the tower there. They stun up Artur, trying to catch up. FNG's gonna lead with perhaps a blind light strike. Right, yeah, the Fisher chain stunning RTZ down with the Laguna Blade on top. Shell Gray does go off, and RTZ will have the opportunity to pop his ultimate. They just need a couple of right clicks to kill up the Draw Ranger. No, it's not enough. God is actually gonna jump forward. He gets that one. It's the explosion from the Blink Dagger canceled by the illusion. S4 spotted out by the familiars, but they won't be able to get there in time, it looks like. DK Phobos tries to go for the Fisher, but. Not there, and they actually get three for two to the favor of Secret. They lost Arteezy, but they still managed to pick up God and a couple of supports. Him getting his ultimate off changed that, the entire uh, state of that fight, because it just made VP split up. They were afraid. They didn't want to get hit close range to it, and he stayed alive for so long that G had to commit all of his mana pool just to kill the Shadow Fiend. And you don't want to trade in a one-on-one -on -one situation like that as this as the Storm Shirt, because now all of a sudden... Uh, if S4 wants it, he has a fully completed Hex. Yep, he spends the, uh... Oh, I think he forgot about the change. Yeah, the Void Stone's still back in the, uh, regular base. But he will have it for the next fight. That's Illidan, huge. meanwhile, he is gonna be going for the BKB. He almost has it completed, so he's, he's kinda hiding it right now. I think once they finish up that BKB, they probably go for a Smoke Force a team fight, utilizing that 10-second match community. Yeah, that's a really good chance. I almost feel that G needs one too, and as long as S4 doesn't show himself, this fight's gonna be so weird. Hey, Phobos, they're gonna jump in on our TT again. They still have the Echo Slam, but there is a response from Team Secret. They do have a Shell Grade that's gonna come in at the last second. Our TZ easily survives. Now they're gonna go into S4. He actually manages to blink out just ahead of that one. Two man backing by oh, Zai. He's so gonna badly. be stunned up though, and they still have the damage. God's gonna come in. He looks for kills. Kuro's actually stolen Ball Lightning once again though. And Team Secret. That was actually so close. I mean, the Arteezy barely survived there, thanks in part to the Shell Grave. S4 barely managed to get out with the blink. And then Zaya also going down. Is VP just too strong in team fights? I think VP actually could have just won the game there if they could have had the Storm Shirt in a little bit of a better position. Right. S4 doesn't have buyback. He's got no gold at all. He just completed his items. and uh, They can still win a fight, but it does require that they have to be able to save Arteezy, and he has to get his ultimate off in that fight. In that fight, he just held it because he knew it wasn't a full five-man commitment from VP. Mm -hmm. So it looked a little bit closer than it was. There's still going to be... I mean, the butterfly is being built right now by Arteezy, but that Solar Crest is still a gigantic advantage uh, that Lil has picked up. Right now, they're using it for taking Roshan. Team Secret actually went for a four-man smoke. Arteezy's gonna join the rest of the team, but it seems to be a bit too late. Kuro actually makes the jump in, but it's too late! God has already grabbed the Aegis, now with a two-man! DK Fobos actually 
Nicely hit a beautiful Fisher. They've already eliminated one. Arteezy managed to get off the BKB. Pops that ultimate. They're trying to go for Lil. We'll take him out. DK Phobos, four staff away, is trying to get ahead of these heroes. And meanwhile, Illidan will just clean up Puppy nice and quick. DK Phobos stalling up these heroes. Managed to get the blink away to the side. And maybe he can turn this one around with Fisher ready to go. Kuro actually steals Light Strike Array. Going for the stun here, but he just gets cleaned up so quickly by those familiars. With the increased damage of the Drill Ranger Aura, once again, BP, they win another fight and are well set to take an objective. And now this is a 7 second BKB from the Shadow Fiend, and conveniently enough, this bottom lane is already pushed in for them. They're just gonna go for this tier 2 tower, but they can decide to go for more if they want. Illidan's starting to pick up a large amount of farm. FNG, if he wants to go for the 4 staff or the Yules, he can have that at the same time. G's gonna get a BKB, and I mean, Kuro's been just such a nuisance for him, but if he gets the BKB and he orchids him, that's one support straight away. You have really good ways to deal with the Dazzle at this point, and it's going to mean that the Shadow Fiend has no other way to survive without the Grave. Yeah, Verdi's Pro. <laughs> Such a large jump up in net worth after that team fight. That's about a 5,000 gold swing from just that fight plus Roshan alone. BKB coming in for God. Illidan's got a large amount of gold. He can choose to go for the MKP if he so chooses. DK Phobos is actually going to build into what I believe is a BKB just to make sure he gets off everything he can in these team fights. Yeah, I think he should definitely go for one here, but uh, this mid fight right now, Secret, they're prepped for it, but they're so afraid. If they lose one more fight, that could actually just mean TI for them. Right. Arteezy buys the full butterfly. They don't have buyback gold on anyone that really matters here. Kuro and Zai might have it, but that's about it. Looks like tier two is Virtus Pro's next objective. Especially with the Aegis, they feel pretty confident that Team Secret is not going to challenge them, but they may be wrong. Team Secret actually go for the five-man smoke here. Oh, he actually they spotted Arteezy. He's going to be able to back him, jump forward, S4. He's going to actually turn around on Light Trigger, right? God's going to jump in. They've already taken out S4, pops a BKB, and will literally lift that ultimate. But God, he's now controlled by the Telkinesis, has to make a jump away, staying away from Arteezy, finally goes down, but that's just the Aegis. Arteezy pushed back by the Silencer, going to go.